Today we're going to talk about jirmu, which is an herb used in TCM, and its use in treatment of mental illnesses, primarily depression. Why should we consider jirmu when treating depression with Chinese medicine? Well, to do that, the first thing we need to understand is how depression works. But the other thing that you need to know about depression is that nobody really understands how it works. The most interesting thing about jirmu is that it is not traditionally used in the regulation of mental and emotional states, but rather in clearing excess heat from the body. However, germ will contain some properties and constituent chemicals that are useful in tackling a wide range of hypotheses as to how depression works. The scientific world has come up with several pathways to explain how it might possibly work based on years and years of research. Let's summarize. Firstly, the monoamine hypothesis of depression. This was the model that was first developed to describe depression and how to treat it. Monoamines are neurotransmitters, chemicals that are used for signaling and communication in the brain. These chemicals include essentially all of the neural chemicals that you've probably heard of before, including dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine, which is usually referred to as adrenaline. Levels of monoamines tend to be lower in people with depression, usually due to lower production. But this can also be caused by higher levels of activation of an enzyme called monoamine oxidase, which breaks down monoamines more quickly to undergo reuptake by the body. Many medications that target this pathway are designed to stimulate the body to produce more monoamines or to break them down more slowly so that they have more time to act. However, there are some gaps present in this hypothesis, which is why the scientific world did further research and developed the second and third hypotheses, which are actually related to each other. Hypothesis number two, the neurotrophin hypothesis. Neurotrophins are chemicals that stimulate and support the growth and maintenance of neurons, aka nerve cells, especially in the brain. Of these, an important marker is BDNF, also called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is exactly what it sounds like. In patients with depression, BDNF levels are lowered, which causes atrophy of existing neurons and impairs development of new ones, especially those involved in exciting the brain. This lowers the ability of neurons to adapt and strengthen, which eventually results in depression. Building on hypothesis number two, we come to number three, the glutamate signaling hypothesis. Essentially, there are two types of signaling systems in the brain, one that excites and increases brain activity, and one that inhibits it or slows it down. The excitatory signaling system involves glutamate, which is a chemical produced by the pathway that BDNF stimulates. Glutamate binds to receptors on neurons called NMDA and AMPA receptors, and these in turn stimulate the brain to increase its activity. The inhibitory signaling system, however, involves a chemical called GABA, which binds to its own GABA receptors to lower brain activity. Many mental illnesses, including depression and anxiety, result from an imbalance where there is too much glutamate, or overexcited glutamate receptors, and too little GABA. The brain is then overstimulated, resulting in depression and anxiety. As a side note, too much GABA and too little glutamate leads to excessive and poor quality sleep. 